We discussed the solution of this problem in the previous video lesson. This problem defines certain condition that we will call property M for short. And it asks us to prove that any triangle that has property M is a right triangle. In other words, that the set of all triangles that have property M is a subset of the set of all right triangles. It seems logical to suggest that the converse of this fact is also true, that any right triangle has property M. In other words, that the set of all triangles with property M and the set of all right triangles are equivalent sets consisting of the same triangles. If it's true, we can ask ourselves the question, why didn't the authors of this problem ask us to prove the stronger fact than what they have formulated? It's a curious paradox that by offering one part of the problem, but a more difficult part, the authors artificially made it more difficult. Well, we can attempt to prove the converse of their statement, hoping that this proof will reveal some ideas that will help us to find the full solution. Let's examine the isosceles right triangles. In such triangles, everything is symmetric and intuitively clear, and we immediately obtain the result that point M, which is the circumcenter of triangle a1, B1, C1 is collocated with vertex A, which obviously lies on the circumcircle of triangle ABC. Indeed, the point of tangency A1 of the X circle to hypotenuse BC is the midpoint of side BC. We know from the previous lesson that points of tangency of X circles to two other sides of triangle ABC. Divide these sides into segments so that two green segments opposite the vertex C have equal lengths. Two red segments opposite to vertex B have equal lengths. And two blue segments opposite to vertex A have equal lengths. Since segment AA1 is the median of right triangle ABC, its length is half of hypotenuse BC. So, the lengths of segment AA1, AB1, and AC1 are equal, which proves that vertex A is the circumcenter of triangle A1, B1, C1. Hence, we have proved that any isosceles right triangle has property M. Let's now examine any right triangles ABC and let's assume that side AB is longer than side AC. Let's define point M as the midpoint of arc BC at the circumcircle of triangle ABC on the same side where vertex A lies. Then angle BMC and angle BAC are both 90 degrees angles since they are subtended by the same diameter BC. Then, by Pythagoras' theorem, lengths of segments MB and MC satisfy the equalities MB squared equals MC squared equals B plus C squared divided by 2. From this, it follows that the length of MB equals the length of MC and equals B plus C over square root of 2. Also, since A, B, C, and M lie on the same circumcircle of ABC, angles ABM and ACM have equal measurements, since they are subtended by the same arc AM. So, triangles MB1C and MC1B are congruent by two sides. One of them is a blue segment, and the included angle. From this it follows that segments MB1 and MC1 are congruent and that triangle B1MC1 is isosceles right triangle. So the lengths of MB1 and MC1 satisfy the equality MB1 squared plus MC1 squared equals B1C1 squared. On the other hand, B1C1 squared equals B squared plus C squared 
from the right triangle AB1C1. So the lengths of MB1 and MC1 satisfy the equality MB1 squared equals MC1 squared equals B squared plus C squared over 2. Finally, from triangle MA1C, by the law of cosines, the length of MA1 squared equals the length of MC squared plus B squared minus 2 MC times B times cosine of 45 degrees, which equals B squared plus C squared over 2, which proves that the lengths of segments MB1, MC1, and MA1 are equal, which means that M is the circumcenter of triangle A1B1C1. Thus we have proved the converse of the problem statement. Every right angled triangle has property M. At this time we can make one additional step toward the full solution of this problem. From the original triangle ABC by Pythagoras theorem we can write the equality a plus b squared plus a plus c squared equals b plus c squared. By using elementary algebra we can simplify this equality to the form a times a plus b plus c equals b times c. This last equality can bring us to the idea of using the power of the point. Since vertex B of triangle ABC is external to the circumcircle of triangle A1B1C1 and segment BC1 has length A, we can prolong side AB down by the length equal to C to get the total length of segment BD equal to A plus B plus C. Also on side BC we can find point A2 the point of tangency of the in circle to side BC. We know that this point divides side BC in the same two red and green segments only with the opposite orientation. Triangles MBA1 and MCA2 are congruent by two sides and the included angle which is 45 degrees. It proves that segments MA1 and MA2 have equal lengths and therefore point A2 lies on the circumcircle of triangle A1B1C1. So we have defined two pairs of points relative to point B. One pair consists of points C1 and D and the other pair consists of points A1 and A2. We have proved that the equality of the power of the point for point B and these four points holds since triangle ABC is the right triangle based on the Pythagoras theorem. And three of these points C1, A1 and A2 lie on the circumcircle of triangle A1, B1, C1. This proves that the fourth point D also lies on the same circle. This result comes close to the idea to prove the converse of this fact. If we define the same two points C2 and D in any triangle that has property M and prove that these two points belong to the circumcircle of triangle A1B1C1, that will prove that the Pythagoras formula holds for such triangle which will prove that it has the right angle. This is the key idea in solving this problem. If you demonstrate that you have discovered this idea and start making some steps in this direction, it should earn you some points, even if you don't finish all these steps. Voila the pragmatic approach.